All right, I thought that was a good song to sing just to reflect on what baptism represents, the fact that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again for us. I just want to preach just shortly and just teach a few things on baptism. So if you want to flip on the other side of your paper, uh, the, the verses that I'll be reading out are there, so you can follow along as I go through these points. Just four things I want to reiterate and remind you of today as we're about to baptize six people today, which is great. Thank God for that. So the first one is that baptism is only for believers. You know, there are some denominations out there that baptize children. You know, they baptize uh, infants or really young children. And they sort of see that as something that the parents do, uh, you know, on behalf of the children, which is not what we see in the Bible. So I just want to share a verse here. Why we only baptize believers. Acts 8.36. This is the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. So Philip is out preaching the gospel. He comes across an Ethiopian eunuch who's he's actually reading Isaiah. He's reading from Isaiah 53, believe it or not. So he's reading from Isaiah 53. He's asking, hey, is, is when Isaiah is preaching this or he's, uh, he's inspired of the Holy Ghost to write this, he asks the question, is he talking about himself? Like is Isaiah going to go through this or is he talking about some other man? So that's when Philip gets into the chariot with him and preaches him Jesus and explains the gospel and he ends up getting saved. Acts 8.36, it says, And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? So the eunuch asks, Well, here's water. What's stopping me from getting baptized now that I'm a believer? Well, if, if nothing was stopping somebody from getting baptized, he wouldn't say anything. He would just say, Well, nothing. Well, you can get baptized even if you don't believe. But look at what he says in verse 37. And Philip said, If, so you see there's a condition there upon baptism. What, what do you have to do to get baptized? If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. So this is the reason why we don't baptize children, because children, young children, do not believe yet. So we baptize them out of the age where they can confess, like the Ethiopian eunuch here. If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest and he answered and said i believe that jesus christ is the son of god and he commanded the chariot to stand still and they went down both into the water both philip and the eunuch and he baptized him so you can see that there is evidence there that is it is a baptism by immersion not a baptism by sprinkling because if it was by sprinkling philip could have just got the water and came back to the chariot right but they had to both go down into the water and there he baptized him because there's enough water to immerse somebody, which is that picture that we're trying to create. The death, like we were saying in that song, dying for me, uh, you know, buried for me, risen for me. So that's the first one. Baptism is only for believers. Go on to the second one. The second one is believers are commanded to be baptized. So some people think baptism is something that's voluntary. You know, they think it's optional and they think, oh, you know, I'm a believer, I'm saved already. What's the point of getting baptized? And if they think, well, this is something you want to do, if you want to make that public testimony, then it's something that you do, which is not the case. But baptism is something that is commanded in the Bible that we are to do as believers. Matthew 3, even though, like I said, even though it has nothing to do with salvation, it does not save us, it is something we're commanded to do as, uh, as uh, Lewis prayed, it's a work that we do. Matthew 3.13, look at here, this is when Jesus gets baptized. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. So that's the purpose and the context of what's happening here. Jesus is coming to get baptized of John the Baptist. But John forbade him. What does that mean? He's saying he didn't let him get baptized. Saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. So what is he saying here? Is he thinking that Jesus... Is meant to take over his ministry of baptizing with water? No, because John knew that the baptism with water was representative of something spiritual. And that's what Jesus would do, right? When we believe on him, we're baptized into the body of Jesus Christ. So he say, hey, I need to be baptized from you. And you're coming to me to get baptized. And comest thou to me? But look at this. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it, or allow it, to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill, look at this, all righteousness, then he suffered it. 
So why did Jesus have to get baptized as part of his ministry? Was it because Jesus had to wash away sin? Was it because Jesus had to get saved? No, it's because Jesus was fulfilling the command of God to get baptized as part of the ministry given to John. And that's why he says, I have to come and get baptized of you. It's because I need to fulfill all righteousness. He has to fulfill the commandments of God just as we ought to. So we see this example here. Then he suffered him. So John the Baptist then allows him to get baptized. And we see here Jesus also baptized by immersion. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. So it wasn't that, and I'll just mention this because this might be an interesting point. A lot of people, when they think of the baptism, they think a dove came down right and usually the holy spirit is pictured as a dove coming down and descending upon jesus but you can see here no it's saying that the spirit of god descended like a dove so we don't know whether it was actually in the shape of a dove but you can think the way a dove kind of lands that's what it's saying it's descending like a dove but the shape of the spirit we don't know but it's often represented as a dove and lo a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You see, baptism is something that is pleasing to God, isn't it? Something that we do to please Him, and it's a commandment that we keep. Look here as well, as we look into Acts 10, we see the, the early apostles as they're going about, you know, preaching the gospel and baptizing people. And we see some Gentiles in Acts 10 getting saved. And look at what Peter says. He says, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And look at this. And he requested. Now he didn't just ask them if they want to get baptized. He said he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So you see here that even the Apostle Peter, he didn't have the mindset that, oh, it's optional, it's if you want to do it or not. No, he said he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. All right, two more. Number three is baptism does not cleanse us from our sins. So it's a figure of the death, burial, and resurrection. It is not a washing. Right? Some people think baptism is a cleansing. It represents a washing, you know, coming out, being clean. That's, that is not what it represents. Right? And this is what the people that believe in baptismal regeneration, that's what they think it represents. It's a washing and a cleansing. And, and to a certain extent, you can understand why people can think that because we use water to wash. We use water to cleanse. But look in 1 Peter 3, 20, 21. The like figure, so it's referring, it's comparing it to Noah, right? The, the fact that the ark went through the water. And it says, the like figure, whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. So we don't want to stop there, because we need to understand what that phrase means. Because we're not saved by baptism. And Peter makes it clear in this passage where he says, see, it's not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. So you see how the baptism is not a cleansing of your sin, it's not a washing of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. How? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So think about it this way. Likewise, how Noah was not saved spiritually by getting on the ark. It was a picture of him being saved by God's wrath. Us getting baptized, that's not what saves us. What saved us was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But the baptism is the like figure that represents us identifying with that death, burial, and resurrection. And what is really interesting, if you're wondering what the water actually represents, so you think about what is the water, well, what did the water represent in Noah's day? The water represent the wrath of God, didn't it? The wrath of God coming on the earth and the ark being a representation of you being saved from God's wrath. What's another picture of baptism in the Old Testament? When the, the, when the people of Israel, when they parted the Red Sea, right? And they were baptized unto Moses through the water. What did that water represent? The wrath of God coming on the Egyptians, on which the God's people were preserved from that wrath, like salvation. So now when you think of the death, burial, and resurrection, what do you think the water represents? The wrath of God. Jesus descending into the wrath of God, both bodily and and spiritually into hell to pay for our sins and rising again so that is what baptism represents when we go under the water we are going into god's wrath like jesus did right that picture 
but coming through God's wrath because we are saved, right? So that might be something interesting to you if you haven't thought about that before, what the water actually represents. That's number three. So it does not cleanse us from our sins. It's a figure of the death, burial, and resurrection. It's not a cleansing. The last one is that, and I've sort of covered this already, that baptism is symbolic of that death, burial, and resurrection. Now, because it's symbolic of that death, burial, and resurrection, we will read in Romans 6 also what that means for us practically in the New Testament in terms of how we ought to live from this point onwards. Romans 6.3, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ, uh, like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Look at this. That henceforth we should not serve sin. So what I want you to think about today, even for the people that are getting baptized, you know, the people that are getting baptized today, but also the people, the rest of you here that have been baptized. Remember, this is a good reminder when we get people baptized, that baptism is meant to represent a new beginning in your life. Right, so just like salvation is the start of a new life spiritually, baptism is the first step of obedience because it's the first step where you decide, you know what, my life is going to change now. Amen. I am going to live for Jesus Christ. That in the same way the, the sins were crucified and buried, I come out as a new creature. That's the decision that people make when they get baptized. It's, hey, I'm going to start doing what's right. That's why it's a, it's a step of obedience. So like it says here, Romans 6, 4, you see it says here, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And Romans 6, 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So I don't want you to think today, but you, you who are getting baptized, and I know you've already spoken to you about this and you've probably already thought about this as well, but just a reminder that today you ought not just think that you're going through some religious ritual, right? It's not just, ah, you know, baptism is just something I have to do because, you know, Victor says it's commanded and it's something that all Christians do. And I, it's just this religious ritual I have to go through. How you ought to think of it is, hey, today is the day I'm making a decision to start walking in the spirit, walking in the commandments of God. And it's that picture of how hey, I'm going to bury the old man and I'm going to put on the new man and walk in newness of life. So please think about that as we are baptizing people today. Those of you also getting baptized, please uh, consider that. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for the, the cool breeze or the, the breeze that we're getting, at least to cool down uh, this hot day. And uh, Lord, we thank you that even though today is hot, hell is even hotter. And uh, thank you for this ordinance of baptism where we can be reminded that we are saved, Lord, from your wrath and through the resurrection, death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the six people that are getting baptized today and uh, pray that today is a day that is glorifying to you, Lord, and uh, it's the start of something new for all the people getting baptized here today and also a reminder for those that are already baptized. So we thank you, Lord, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's sing one last hymn. We will sing the second hymn. So I've chosen this hymn to go with uh, the message. I have decided to follow Jesus, and then I'll get the guys, six guys who are getting baptized over here. We'll just, I'll just remind you how it works again, and then we'll just get baptized one at a time. Give me a bit closer. Tell me how close. <laughs> Right, Simon, have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart? Yes. Okay, Simon, I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Buried in the likeness of his death. Raised in the likeness of his resurrection.
Okay, we are up. Oh no, wait, sorry, do the ladies first. Uh, food tree. Putri, have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart? Yes. Right, Putri, I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. You've got a towel or something. All right, Namafa. If I like the water, <laughs> I'm going to look so small next to that. <laughs> Alright, Namafa, have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart? Yes. Okay, Namafa, I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. on the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart. Yes. Peter, I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Guys, we'll just close with prayer, and then if you are sticking around, we're going to stick around here for, for a few more hours, let the kids play with the water, we're going to get some pizzas picked up, so stick around if you can, just come and eat, you want to stick around and have some fellowship, okay, well done to the guys getting baptized, maybe we'll take a photo. Alright, let's pray. Thank you Lord so much for this day, thank you for the people here uh, that have taken the step, Lord, of obedience, and I pray, Lord, that this is the start of a new life for them. And uh, Lord, it's a reminder for us to always live for you each day. Thank you so much, Lord, for dying and rising again for us. We pray all these things in your precious name. Amen.
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. <laughs>